Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. On December 17, 1977, Gary Gilmore was executed for murder. He was the first prisoner executed by the United States after a 10-year suspension of the practice. When asked if he had any last words, he simply replied, let's do it. Years later, advertising executive Dan Wyden adapted those words into a slogan that is now more widely known than Gary Gilmore. Last words are powerful. They are the final statement a person's entire life has been leading up to. One last chance to go on record before obliteration. We don't know Albert Einstein's last words. He spoke them in German to a nurse who only knew English. They're lost. But what will be our first words? The first words from Earth, extraterrestrials out there might hear from us. We have been broadcasting signals with radio waves wirelessly through the air for more than 100 years. Under the right conditions, those signals can leak into space and keep going outward at the speed of light through our galaxy, through the universe. Current human technology would struggle to tune into regular TV and radio broadcasts from as near as Mars, but perhaps other intelligent beings out there would fare better and could point their instruments at Earth and hear us. If so, what would the earliest thing be that they could receive? our cosmic first words. Well, the earliest signal, robust enough to be picked up light years away, might have come from Hitler. His 1936 broadcasting of the Summer Olympics used powerful enough radio equipment to reach 41 countries, making it a contender for what listening extraterrestrials could receive as, to them, Earth's first words. Within the last 50 years or so, broadcast signals in general have become stronger than Hitler's Olympics and are better candidates for being intercepted. The earliest of them have traveled 50 light years away from Earth. Altogether, they have entertained billions of people and by now, about 2,000 stars. The 133 brightest of which are shown here. So far, Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech has traveled as far as the furthest on the diagram, Mu'ara, which has four known planets. In six years, our first words on the moon will pass by Mu'ara's system. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Those words were spoken by Neil Armstrong seen here a few years before his death with Eugene Cernan, the most recent and currently last man to have walked on the surface of the moon. On December 14, 1972, before climbing back into the lunar module, Cernan spoke our, as of today, last words on the moon. We leave as we came, and God willing as we shall return with peace and hope for all mankind. Of course, once inside the lunar module, the crew kept talking, meaning that technically, the very last words humans have said on the surface of the moon were a countdown spoken by Harrison Jack Schmidt. Three, two, one, ignition. We haven't been back to the moon since. But hold on. What were the first words spoken on the surface of the moon, really? Armstrong's giant leap statement is a good answer, but what counts as being on the moon? If touchdown counts, then the first words spoken on the moon go not to Armstrong, but to Buzz Aldrin, who, on feeling at least one of the landing pads softly settle onto the lunar soil, spoke this immortal description. Contact light. Contact light. We are pumping broadcasts into space as an ever-expanding sphere of radio waves. But here's something humbling. Even while growing at the speed of light, Earth's radio sphere is puny. This is our galaxy, the Milky Way, comparatively 
the distance our radio signals, our voice, has traveled is this big. The universe is huge. How the heck are you supposed to be remembered in it? Utter last words that stick around after you die. Well, you may have heard the famous quote from Banksy. They say you die twice. One time when you stop breathing, and a second time a bit later on when somebody says your name for the last time. But your anonymous influence continues long after that, right? I mean, people may stop saying your name, but for instance, if you have kids, and they have kids, and so on and so on, you continue on in a way, maybe just genetically not by name. Well, people have tried. The world record for most children passed out of one single woman belongs to Mrs. Theodore Vasiliev. She had 16 pairs of twins, seven sets of triplets, and four sets of quadruplets for a grand total of 69 children. As for being a biological father, that takes less time. The documented record for most children fathered by one man is held by Ismail ibn Sharif, who is estimated to have had more than 900 children with multiple women. But children or not, in a feedback system like Earth or life, cause and effect are complicated and never ending. Remember the double pendulums from this video. A small difference in the initial conditions of a system can lead to enormously different outcomes later. On Tuesday, I'm flying from London to Los Angeles. The plane will be flown by pilots who can steer it toward the correct runway in the United States, but if the airplane needed to be aimed from London and sent on a straight shot, well, things would need to be very specific. Miss aiming just one degree to the left at the beginning would send the plane not to Los Angeles, but nearly 160 kilometers south to Tijuana, Mexico. Your name and your last words might eventually be forgotten, but your status as an initial condition for the universe's future is already happening. Bach died before he could complete the art of fugue. The piece ends abruptly during Contrapunctus 14. So composers continue reconstructing it. For that reason, it is uniquely alive, speaking new last words all the time as new people meet it and finish it in their own way. Likewise, no matter how cool or lame and small you feel, you will continue. Your impact will be remembered. Mathematics guarantees it, even if, like Bach, you leave things unfinished. And as always, thanks for watching.